once again. Here's Rob. Okay, that's me. Welcome back to Hollywood Headliners, Andy, Big Andy E, and Rob here tonight. Say Rose, we never figured <laughs> out. She's not here. She didn't She didn't come in tonight. I thought she was going to call in maybe and at least tell us where she was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, these kids, kids. These, these millennials, you hire these millennials. There was a big article in the LA Times this week about the problems companies are having with millennials because they have such a bad work attitude. They expect so much. They want everything. They think they're owed everything. They're, they didn't have to work like you and me, Andy, oh struggling in the ditches, coming up from nowhere to achieve nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, our guest tonight, uh, by the way, by the way, uh, just before I introduce uh, Dale, check out our podcast here at uh, Hollywood Headliners. Uh, you go to ubnradio.com. We've got all sorts of really good stuff. Uh, you can learn about sitcoms. You can learn about being a showrunner. You can learn about being a warm-up guy. You can learn about being a musician. You can learn about being a game show person. Uh, what we do here on Hollywood Headliners every week, no matter where you are in the world, and I say, by the way, buongiorno. <laughs> I say, um, uh, buenas noches. Oh. Hello. Uh, v. Gates. Vos es los. Uh, happy New all, Year. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, but we try to teach you a little bit about Hollywood and talk about the the backs the backside of Hollywood a little bit. So it's not just... And there's also the YouTube channel. Well, tell us about that YouTube channel. It's up and humming. What's it called? I forgot. What is it? Hollywood, What's the name this week? Hollywood Headliners <laughs> YouTube channel. And Hollywood Headliners on YouTube. Yeah, and who's putting that video together for us? I believe that's our, is she our CFO this week? Our she, CEO? She is. You know, we we'll got to put her on camera CIA. just so people could see. She is with the CIA and the NSA. <laughs> How are we doing in Syria, by the way? We're, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let me, let me ask uh, Putin. <laughs> hey, uh, our guest uh, tonight is a uh, really, really fun actor. He's a former stand-up comedian. He's a sports guy. Started in sports down there in Texas. Super. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. I got to get your mic up there. Uh, and, um, he is currently in, uh, the series going into its fourth season called Shameless on Showtime with, uh, William H. Macy and a cast of about 7,000 other people. My God, it's like Spartacus. It's like unbelievable. Everybody's on that. It's on Sundays on Showtime. Uh, but he's got an ace up his sleeve, uh, in addition to his acting talent. Hey, that was pretty good. No oh, pun intended. My Lord. He's the chairman of the Hollywood Poker Celebrity Tournament team with Michael J. Fox Foundation. Uh, let's welcome, first of all, our guest tonight, Dale Wade Davis. There you are. Well, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm the last minute scab replacement for Rose. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Uh, but that's okay, we love you anyway. Uh, let Good me put know. everybody in the studio on camera right now. There's Andy, there's me, and there he is, Dale Wade Davis. Hey, great to have you with us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, Shameless. It's going into its season four on Showtime. It's a wha I've seen the promos. They are the wackiest, nuttiest thing. You guys run around your underpants. And what the it's insane. It's probably the worst show in the history of television. Not quality-wise, <laughs> but just in content. They go places it's never been gone before. I mean, the writing is spectacular. They must have a ball sitting in the writer's room coming up with all these crazy scenarios that have never been done before because William H. Macy is... Uh, just a degenerate drunkard that sat in Chicago, an Irish drunk, and, and I'm one of his buddies in the bar. So yeah. I drink a lot of fake beer. How'd you uh, research that? Uh, a lifetime of training. Yeah. 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 Well, you're from Texas. I'm from Texas. And they have those Texas uh, uh, beer salon things down there where you all, you all get in the <laughs> line and dance. Well, you said salons. We don't get yeah. in, in Seattle, the salon. In and Seattle, have your hair done. You have your yeah. cowboy hair done at the salon <laughs> yeah. and well, then go to the well, salon. Well, I feel so out of place already because I was in the green room. I looked in the mirror and I thought, my God, I'm wearing white after Labor Day. <gasps> oh, <laughs> but I, shame. I've never <laughs> felt so alive. <laughs> this is, what's your, who's your character on Shameless? Uh, to get him Gary, uh, like I said, he's always in the bar, except for occasionally they let him out. Uh, <laughs> that worked. That worked pretty well on Cheers, by the way, for a couple of the guys. A couple there. of guys, yeah. It's, uh, I'm working up to that. This is, uh, you know, smoke fake cigarettes, drink fake in your beer, uh, and eat stale pretzels and start fights and you know, general what, what drunkard. Is, what are fake cigarettes? Um, they're worse than real cigarettes. Yeah. And I'm not a smoker, but they're uh, they they have them where they smoke a lot. They want to see the smoke on camera. 
So oh. they, they last forever, and you have to be careful of continuity, like how much you've smoked, how much oh. is left. It's, it's a whole other job. <laughs> this is, I mean, the whole thing. How long has it taken to shoot an episode? I mean, when, when you're sitting there in the bar, how, is Eight it? Eight days. Wow. And so, so what they try to do is they try to shoot uh, the bar scenes in one day, you know, or two days. They try to stack them together. Um, to get us in and out of there as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah, right. And so, and, and that way they can pay you less. Yeah, too. no, no use paying me for eight days when they could pay me for half a day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what would you rather do, Andy? You're a big shot producer. What would you rather do with poor Dale? Oh, I'd spend the I'd spend the money on the eight days. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> yeah, me too. We're all a bunch of liars on this show, <laughs> but we're lying together, and that's what's really good. That's it's why almost, Dale and I have fun together at the poker table. It's only we don't lie it's, ever. It's, no, you're a, you're a huge poker player. I am a huge poker player. Um, as, as you said, I have the the. Celebrity Poker Tournament. This is our fourth one. Yeah. Uh, and it's sponsored by HollywoodPoker.com. And they're, I play online often there. Now, what is that? Um, it's a website that you can go to. It's a, it's a Facebook app. And you, uh, you download the app. It's very easy. You go on and play. And they have a roster of, I want to say, at least 300 celebrities that play there on a regular basis. And so you can sit down at the table and play... You know, you never uh, Kevin Pollack could be there. No way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you're there. actually playing in real time with these guys? Yeah, real time. You sit down at the table, um, and you never know who's going to be there. I mean, there's tons of celebrities. There's, you know, uh, Michael Vartan from Alias plays all, all the time. Uh, uh, Brian Krause, who started on Charm. Like, you know, we're all regular. We'll have a great time. And, yeah. And so it's exciting for people that, and it's worldwide. They come in and they sit, and they never know who's going to be at their table. You know, this show is worldwide also. In fact, we're number one in Thailand. How is poker doing in Thailand? Bangkok is, we're huge in Bangkok. (laughs) Really? Off the charts. Off the charts. Wow. Yeah. We have Pad Thai night at Hollywood Poker. (laughs) Oh, my God. That would just be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it is delicious. You know, sometimes I like pad thai with a little uh, little chicken in it. Uh, Do you? Yeah, just a little, I don't know, maybe a little on the side. We'll let some of that chicken saute stuff, that peanut sauce. We, we eat beef in Texas. Do you? Yeah. We're, what part of Texas are you from? I grew up in Houston, but I, I currently have a, a, a ranch in East Texas, which is... You know, the border between Texas and Louisiana. Well, that, hundred thousand acres. Uh, two hundred thousand. <laughs> two hundred thousand acres. That's it. That's just the, the back the back lot. What do you raise on your ranch in East Texas? <laughs> um, well, Chickens, <laughs> pad, pad thai. Yeah, coyotes and you know. No, yeah, nor- normally I have uh, uh, Texas Longhorns. I love Texas Longhorns, and um, I we sold them, so there's none there now. But I'll be re- re- restocking soon. What who, what do you do with a Texas Longhorn when you sell them? I mean, are, do you? Eat them? No, no, no. You don't eat them. These are, I mean, you could. I mean, they're beef and they're they're lean beef, but yeah. these are almost like show animals. You yeah. you buy them and people buy them like they buy show dogs. I don't know poodles or you know whatever the the end dogs are. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Andy, what's your dog again? He's a. It uh, was a. Thanks for bringing it up. The uh, black lab golden retriever. It's a lab and Epstein. Uh, Ep- Epstein a doodle. I think is. <laughs> Is what he is. That sounds masculine. <laughs> An Epstein a doodle, something like that. So the Longhorns are just sort of show animals, right? Um, and, and they have papers, like the the ones that I originally bought had papers going all the way back to the 1700s. So they're that's the, an the, old piece of steel. It's, <laughs> it's an old piece of beef. It's aged beef. Now it, wow! Uh, it uh, so you can you can trace it all the way back to show that their bloodlines are pure and they've never been mixed with. You know, any of the other uh, a heifer or, or Hereford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Do they have uh, a Co- Kobe, <laughs> Kobe beef? Are they doing that in Texas? Um, no, I think they That's have. That's just Japan or no? I, well, I've seen it in, seen in it restaurants. In Hawaii. I've seen it in restaurants here. I don't know if it's the real Kobe beef or. And the, are they doing that in Texas? Uh, I think so. You know, Andy, you know, this is a restaurant I, show also. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing what? Andy complains because I don't feed him before the show. And so I you hear bring the food up, thing. You bring up pad thai. <clears throat> what do you expect me to Look, do? Look, between every break, it's really <laughs> disgusting. So <laughs> what, so then what do you really do on this ranch um, or farm? Is it a farm or a ranch? It's a ranch. I okay. mean, you do, well, my, my dad lives nearby, so he helps out when I'm here in Los Angeles uh, paying the bills. Yeah. And so I try to go there during the wintertime when it traditionally slows down in Hollywood. Do you grow anything? Like uh, wheat or anything, or what are they no, growing these No, Texas? no. Armadillos? No, you grow? <laughs> you got an armadillo coop? Or? No, but I that's see awesome. armadillos. I mean, we have fox. We have we have these huge uh, feral pigs that get up to a thousand pounds, and they're vicious. Yeah. So you have to lock up your pets. You have to be careful because they travel in packs, and they're actually very smart. Okay. Yeah. So can I tell you a true story that just happened last week? Please. A friend of ours is teaching now down in uh, Texas. And she said they had to call the kids in for school lockup because there was a feral pig somewhere around the school. Now, are they different from wild boar? Uh, I think so. They're huge and they're uh, they're mean. So I, I don't because I'm in Italy, a, it's a little. It reminds me a little bit of Andy. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not a boar connoisseur. Per well, se. 
<laughs> when we were in Italy, where we were staying, wild boar were all over the place, but it was uh, it was a deli- it was a specialty of the area. Hmm. You know, to catch them and prepare them, we went to a a wild boar festival. Kind of catch and your own, was, catch your own boar. Oh no, no! You know was, you can do that. No, sometimes no. just listening to your no. newscast, we can we can do that same thing. It can it can be and reading your IMDb page also <laughs> produces the same effect. I haven't yeah. even uh, I haven't even talked about my news of the week uh, tonight. By the way, uh, season two of Farm Kings wraps tonight. Do you ever watch Far- uh, Farm Kings? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> I haven't either. Uh, it's GAC's highest rated non music show. Really? Yeah. The, the, it, it's a docu series. It owes its popularity to the fact that this is a real show about the ups and downs of hard workers in a tough competitive climate. I think I have a pitch meeting at GAC. <laughs> here, 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 pitch this. <laughs> hey, I got a great oh. idea. I want to call it Farm Guys. It's a spin off. The Farm well, Guys. I have, I have seen the, the duck, the duck one, the duck, the, dynasty. duck dynasty. That's A and E. So, yeah. Now, uh, what did you think of that show when you saw it? Actually, um, I was in a hotel room. I was down visiting my daughter, and I, they were playing a marathon, and we kind of got sucked into it. We yeah. we watched six it's or seven clever. of them. It's pretty compelling, it, isn't it? Yeah. What makes it so interesting to you? Uh, what, what, what what entrancifies you with those guys? Uh, the... The one-liners, the right, you know, they're funny. Well, the writing, well, it's well written. It's the writing. <laughs> it is well written yeah, I mean, for the, a reality the, show. The, the crazy uncle, you know, he's just yeah, a barrel yeah, laughs, yeah. you know. So, um, you know, they, it's it's well done. Do you cry I at think. the end when the family's around I the sob table? Yeah, uncontrollably. <laughs> yeah. I do that usually. That There's not a dry pair of pants in our house. When we watch that. <laughs> That's a different kind of crime. Oh, we're talking to Dale Wade Davis tonight, <laughs> who is uh, among other things, he's on Shameless, and uh, he's been on True Blood. True Blood. You, did you have a va- uh, vi- vampire suck the bejesus out of you? Actually, um, and this part was mostly cut out, unfortunately, but it was, I had a love scene with a, the, it's funny you brought this up, there was a <laughs> table full of desserts, <laughs> and these weren't like Twinkies. What do you mean or, funny I brought it up? I, I, I've been preparing all week for this interview. <laughs> I did put that on must talk about on my bio, right? Yeah. So, no, yeah. there was a, uh, long story short, there was a table full of desserts, and not like uh, t- desserts you get out of the vending machine, like designer cakes, everything. And they played this song, and I had become possessed by uh, the Monad, what was a big, I think it was season two. Yeah. And they said, at the end of this song, which was about a six-minute song, we don't want any desserts left on this table. <laughs> so they had That me was your this, direction? Yeah. So they had me and this girl, we were in Sookie's Kitchen, and they start playing this music, and the director's you know, telling us, okay, Del, take your shirt off. Lick cake off her fingers, and, and everyone. There's 50 people standing around, and you know, you're just like, oh, "This is what I went to college for." You know, it's, it's it. People think, "Oh my gosh!" We can find know. that scene on YouTube. Uh, I hope not. I will now. <laughs> no. That wow. is my goal tonight. Wow. So, so you got to sit around there and take your shirt off in front of everybody and do yeah. a love scene. Yeah. Um, I think it mostly got cut out, though, because it happens all the time. You must have left too much of your shirt on or something. Well, no, I took too much off, and they're like, we're not here. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's take a little break. When we come back, we'll continue with Dale Wade Davis and talk about, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about poker playing, how you got into it, and some of the stuff you did before you became a big superstar actor (laughs) and had to come down and do shows like this. (laughs) Rob Waller, you're listening to Hollywood Headliners with Big Andy E. Once again, here's Rob Weller. Thank you, Jim Stahl, our wonderful announcer. Paid him over $2 million to do that. Cash. I'm not sure he, re- I don't think he reported anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Dale Wade Davis as our guest star tonight from Shameless on Showtime on Sunday nights. Do you ever watch the show? Uh, yeah, I catch it from, from time to time, but it's always frustrating because you see, I should have done this, or you get yeah. cut all together, and yeah. it's just, you know. It, there's, there's, a, there's a thing about actors, uh, and there's a French term, and I cannot remember it, but it's when you audition, as you walk out, you think, oh, why did I do this? Why did I do that? Sacre bleu. Yeah, well, no. it is sacre bleu. Uh, but every, every actor goes through that. Well, I, when I, before I was an actor, and I would hear actors say, oh, I can't watch myself, I was like, Come on. Like, who are you kidding? Of yeah. course you watch yourself. Yeah. yeah. And then, with, with your family, with popcorn, you yeah. get all your friends. Yeah, and, yeah no. I'm on, I'm on. No, it's, uh, you, I don't do that because it, you're just so critical of yourself. And yeah. some, I, I, I'm not as, as crazy about it as some people are. I can watch some stuff, but, you know, you're always directing yourself in your head the next time. Thinking yeah. About, you know. Yeah. Now, Dale, before you started acting, though, what, 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 you had a, a couple of other different careers. Yeah. And my I, voice just cracked. By the way. <laughs> so, can you tell us? Well, um, I I started in Texas, and I started working in radio when I was 17 at, at KILT in Houston, Texas. 
Uh, and then that I transitioned into TV uh, sports reporting and anchoring in Houston. Wait, wait a minute. How would you start at 17? I mean, that's... Um, the summer after I got out of uh, high school, actually, um, I met a guy uh, who knew this guy named Barry Warner in Houston, who's kind of a legend. He had a sports show. And so I was in there uh, first unpaid, getting coffee and whatnot. Yeah, I, yeah. I was scared of my own shadow. I was 17. Never even thought I would ever even go into a radio station. And then here I am. And um, you know, just transitioned into TV. And what, what was the experience like? I mean, what do you remember from those early days? Because this is this is the stuff that we love to chat about here a little bit. Because it's really, you know, this is show business. It's so glamorous. It's so glorious, and yet it's just really a job in a lot of respects. Well, it? I was. I think I was making minimum wage when I was getting paid. Yeah. And everyone thought, you know, of course you're making a gazillion dollars, and and I remember I'm I'm technically. Uh, the dumbest guy on the planet. Like I, I don't get anything technical, and so and the reason that's relevant. <laughs> it's funny is you ought to be working this board. <laughs> Rob, meet Dale. Dale, yeah. Rob. I think we've already met. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm all thumbs. What do I do next? <laughs> well, the reason that's relevant is I had to go because we would host a show from the Astrodome um, several times a week when the Astros played there, uh-huh. and so they would send me in my own truck to go get this mobile unit to take to the Astrodome to set it up to where the host just had to flip a switch and he's on the air. Wow. And so it took me forever <laughs> to learn how to do that. <laughs> and so I did that for free for probably a year before they finally, let's give them four bucks an hour. Yeah, you know? that was it. Yeah. And then but uh, that's how you started. And started. had you always wanted to be in show business? Was that sort of a dream for you? Um, I felt like I wanted to, to work in sports and, uh, uh, and so that's kind of what got me yeah. started. And then did you I, play sports? I did. I played uh, uh, high school football a yeah. little bit in college. Yeah. And um, uh, you know, so I've always loved sports. But I, actually, I loved it least when I was covering it. It became a, a job then. It's interesting. Yeah. So once again, you know, behind the scenes of sports or show business, it takes on a different tenor, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, uh, you know, you you think these athletes are really great, and some of them are, but then you. You know, you see the the dark side, and, and you're like, okay. So I was I was kind of burned out on it by the time I was in my mid twenties. I was ready to move on to something else. Yeah. So then, what'd you get into? Um, I got cast as a reporter in Tin Cup, which is a with Kevin Costner and shot a golf movie, uh, shot in Texas, and they. So I Classic. think I had one or two lines. Yeah, and they. Cheech Marin. Yeah. Yeah, Cheech Marin. That was a great movie. I, 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 no, I, I, I love watched it again. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to remember who the the girl was. Um, uh. Uh, I can uh, Rene face. Russo. Yeah. Oh yeah, Rene. Ru- God, that's right. But it's a classic I mean, scene where he's on the one hole. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and he keeps. keeps I was right there for that. It Re- was, that was. It, yeah. It must have taken all day. Uh, yeah. It, how long did it take him to shoot? And was he really hitting the ball? He was really hitting the ball. Yeah. And he had never played golf before that movie. Of course, he had really? six months that he trained, and then he, you know, he's a, he's an athletic guy. He played yeah. baseball, and um, so I, you know, I had a small part on that movie, but I ended up being his double and stand-in for six weeks huh. because. They were so busy, you know. We kind of same body style or whatever, and so was that a Ron Shelton? Yeah, Ron movie? Shelton. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah. so it was well, man, who's fun. Ron Shelton? Don't just throw a name out like he that. He directs like, a lot of sports movies. Well, he he, he, he did, wrote. Uh, uh, what did he do for him first? He did the baseball movie. It was, um, was it Field of Dreams? Or yeah. No, uh, no, no, he, he didn't do Field of Dreams. Did he do Field of Dreams? Ron the Natural. Shelton? No, he didn't do that. No, that's he, Redford. He, he did a lot of them that, you, that would surprise you. Yeah, he did some major sports. Somebody's going to now. Somebody's going to buzz in here and say, "You idiots! <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to know that kind of stuff." Well, I would look it up. No, but we I don't can't yeah. get a signal. Here. Yeah, it's, it's, right. we're like in an underground we, bunker here. Yeah, it's a really good point. We'd be much more on a Dale if we could just get One a signal, moment, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, <laughs> and have a couple of technical. Don't experts worry, here. Andy's on it, Dale. We'll <laughs> we'll have the <laughs> answer. We go off in 20 minutes. We'll have it in 23 minutes. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, you know what can I say? So, so uh, you, you kind of got into the sports stuff, kind of got through the sports stuff. Then what did you do? Um, well, I, I used the Tin Cup to transition into acting, and I got to know some of the guys that some of the actors that worked on the movie and some of the technical guys. And they said, "Hey, if you're ever in Hollywood, you know, you know, because hey, I was oh, you really didn't fall that direction. for that. Hey, y- yeah, th- then I'm I'm gonna end up. Hey, Amber, if you're ever in Hollywood, <laughs> <laughs> come on over. Well, it was it was uh, uh, it was actually you know legitimate. So I took a year. Um, I, I got out of my contract at Fox at the time, or, and, and so I was doing behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. And so I did some independent movies. I did a, a National Spalding commercial. With Hakeem I mean, Olajuwon. you were really bitten by the bug here at this point. Yeah. You really wanted to be really an actor. Really wanted to do it. Really wanted to do it. So I mean, did that just take over your whole psyche. I mean, were you like, come on, I can do this. I'm going to be great. I know well, I got the stuff. Well, I felt like I could do it, and I, I felt you know you have to have the confidence to, for anybody to any of us to sit here and think that, you know, we're interesting enough for anyone to listen yeah. or watch us. So 
So you have to have that. And then excuse I really me, just a moment. Andy, are you paying attention to me? What was your name? Bull Durham. <laughs> Bull Durham. That's it. <laughs> 1017, 1018. Another movie, White Men ju- Can't Jump. <laughs> white, white, two minutes, 12 seconds and <laughs> counting. Uh, you know, we always have the information here, Dale. I'm sorry. I see that. So you got into that. And you said, look, I got the confidence to do this. I'm going for it. I, I'm willing to give up my gig. I'm working for Sp- Fox. I don't care. I'm going to go do this. Yeah. <clears throat> so it took me a year to, to get the credits, to get my SAG card, to get enough credits to get an agent out here. So... I was already kind of ahead in the game when I got here. Yeah. Um, and so when I had some, some TV skills from writing and editing that I could use so I wasn't waiting tables and transitioning and doing the whole uh, stereotypical Hollywood thing. Right, right. So I just transitioned into that and then started working out here. And uh, my, I remember my first part was on a show called Jack, which every – male actor in their 20s was on Jack because it was on for so long. <laughs> that or Charmed. One of Those two seemed to be the two shows that every guy was on. Well, one, one of my closest friends, Brian Krause, was a star, and I, I tried to get him to come with me tonight, but he's in... Yeah, thanks, he's, Brian. He's, he's, yeah. In, he's in Salt Lake doing Comic-Con. Yeah, you put know, uh, like, put Brian on our Comic-Con blacklist. Comic-Con in Salt Lake? <laughs> yeah, they have, they have different Comic-Con. Oh, I didn't know. You did <laughs> regional it's, it's ones? It's a huge one. What's oh, the comedy wow. like in Salt Lake? Uh, it's clean cut i would guess i don't know I, I think it's just they do different cities and they these guys if they're on a sci-fi show they'll pay them to come out and sit and sign autographs for a day yeah so uh, he said how much does this pay and i said i think <laughs> zero so he took off to salt lake what we don't pay anything <laughs> no, oh no, he got wrong information no, we'll, what we'll, we'll get him told, in here who told he him got this, wrong Andy? information we'll, we'll get him in here. say say told him that say when did we meet then in your in your um when career? i was freelancing at cbs were um, you freelancing the sports sports um, department a little or bit news. here and there. A little bit of both. Mostly um, mostly news. And I think you and I work together in entertainment a little bit. Right, right, right. You were producing over there. Right. So that's when, we, that's when we started meeting. We found we had some similar interests. Which was basically. Getting out of CBS, yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah. Gambling. Yeah. Number gambling, two. Gambling, yeah. number two. Going into debt, hopelessly into debt for, <laughs> yeah. for in perpetuity, number four. In, a, in aroma. Yeah. Oh, you smelled the same? <laughs> yeah, we wear the same cologne. It's a Rob Kardashian scent. Oh, it's super. It's a custom scent. I love that. By the way, <laughs> where's Lamar? <laughs> where's Say? Where do you think Lam- Where do you think Lamar is? Uh, was he at the crack house? I don't know. I mean, I'm not oh, following the story. Oh man, that's it. Man. I mean, I heard that. Is that is that not true? I mean, is he in rehab? He's now? supposed to. Know. Yeah, that's tonight. He's supposed to. He's, he well, f- he's finally him. gone to rehab. We, we yeah. think he's going into rehab. We're hoping he's going to go into rehab. Good so for him. Get his act together. He's a great guy. Everybody loves him. All the Lakers loved him when he was playing here. He just had, you know, he, he got traded and he married a Kardashian. And yeah, that, <laughs> that's a recipe for disaster. Holy right man. By the way, we try to mention Kardashians as much as we can because then we, when we tag the show, people think that we're actually talking to a real Kardashian. Nice. So, Dale, you're Dale Wade Kardashian. <laughs> okay. Today. So, how long have you been married to one of the Kardashians? <laughs> um, I'm still waiting. Is there any single ones left? <laughs> yeah, the, do- the uh, young ones. I don't pl- the 13 year olds. <laughs> I can wait it out. <laughs> well, it's five years. Yeah, I'm yeah. not in the NBA though. Maybe I will be by then. So you're in SAG. I'm in SAG. You know, some you know. That's... Talk, talk a little bit uh, about this this poker thing and how you guys raise money and how you got into the kind of the charity thing uh, with this because it, it's a great thing to do, giving back. But you sound like you're having a blast. Dude, this is the one of the most fun charitable endeavors I think I've heard of. It really is. And we started. This is my fourth one. And initially, I started because I had a uh, uh, had a kidney issue, and I've always been healthy my entire life. And then I needed a transplant, um, and so that happened. And I was very lucky, and I met all these people on my journey as I'm in dialysis. And you know, I literally went from from healthy to transplanted in five months, which is a record. And so it was, it was a blip on the radar. It, for it me. came on really fast. For yeah. You. Well, and I had I had friends go get tested to donate, and and one of my friends, Philip Palmer, who's a, yeah. The number one morning anchor here in Terri- Los Angeles. Really terrific, big, tall guy in the morning here yeah. on the ABC station exactly. at KBC. Uh, Philip donated one of his kidneys to you. He sure did. So does that mean that you can read prompter? Um, uh, I, I can't read. Period. <laughs> I can't. I, I, Have you found any personality changes since you've got Philip Palmer's no, kidney? No, no. We, we're we're both from the south. We both, you know, are kind of athletic guys, and we we're, we have a lot in common to begin with. So. Yeah, I don't think I think you have to get into a deeper organ, a heart or a brain or you know. <laughs> really, before you can start yeah, I think picking this up is, some of the traits. Yeah. This so anyway, is we, you'll have to come back for a medical show. Yeah. Oh, medical transplant. That's show. the next hour, isn't it? <laughs> On UBN, yeah. I, I think. I look forward to that. Say's researching that right now, uh, <laughs> as I recall. Okay. So anyway, uh, so I felt very fortunate. I met so many sad stories that 
the people that just weren't as fortunate as I was. So yeah. I wanted to do something to help those people. And so I joined with a charity called Renal Support Network, which is a great, the best kidney organization, in my opinion. Um, and we did several years of, uh, you know, the, the tournament. And they had a close relationship with Jack Black, which kind of helped put us on the map. And he Because he he's was, a huge poker player. Well, he, he plays, but he's a huge star, which is more important. Yeah. He right, puts, that's, but, right. that's what I meant to say. He's a huge <laughs> star who plays poker yes. when he's not playing his guitar. Exactly. And so he, you know, he kind of gave us credibility and put butts in the seats and, you know, the first few years. And so it, we grew tremendously. And this year we couldn't get it lined up. So uh, I'm, and I've always been involved with Lena Wynn's Love Across the Ocean. She's an anchor at KCAL. And, and she's my, 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 my partner for a Did, while in this. Y- 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 Andy, you seem to know all these people. I've seen them around on Facebook <laughs> and in commerce. Yeah. Does, do you play? Has Andy played in any of your tournaments? Um, he has. I don't think you were there last year. No. Thank you. I was in Albuquerque last year. Oh. I uh, could not fly in for that one. Well, hopefully, but we'll the see first, this one. he was first trying week. to hitchhike back to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go to L.A. He was shirtless. <laughs> any armadillo that would give me a ride. Uh, so anyway, we parlayed that. This is our fourth year. We've got a hundred celebrities. We're sponsored by HollywoodPoker.com. And, uh, you and when know, is it again? It's September 28th at Commerce Casino. So you come out, you know, and you can sign up at uh, HollywoodPoker.com or LoveAcrossTheOcean.org and go there and follow the links. And, and can we play? Now you mentioned earlier this is a Facebook app. So can we play at home and and, and get involved in this tournament? Um, you can play at home, and but they they have the, the they have a roster of three or four hundred celebrities that play at HollywoodPoker.com on a regular basis, and so you can play there, and it's free. And you never know who's going to sit at your table. You know, there's always celebrities coming in and out of there. Yeah. From their trailer on set or late at night, you know, going over lines, they'll log on and play for a little bit. Yeah, and a lot of times there's just a lot of idle time between scenes. And it's yeah. sort of like, hey. I the last on. time I played with Dale, there was an Elvis impersonator at our table. And <laughs> Those <are> wi- the- <laughs> this what it was what it was. And then there was a real sexy actress who had everybody distracted. But then I think it was somebody like uh, Jackie Johnson. Yeah. Who knocked me out with like a 3-5, you know. What do you, what do you play? Uh, Texas Hold'em. Hold'em, Hold'em. Texas, Texas Hold'em. That's like the big game everyone wants to play. Yeah. And, and so uh, that's what we do. And so people, and it's, it's all the money, all the proceeds go to charity, either the Michael J. Fox Foundation or Lena Wins. And uh, so the money that you spend there is tax deductible. So you get a tax write-off while you're having some fun and, and mixing it with celebrities. So. Hey, somebody's calling in. Let me answer it. Just, 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 hello? Yes. Hi, you're on Hollywood Headliners. Uh, who, who, who is this? This is Dano from Memphis. You from Memphis? Yes. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing great. Uh, are you, How are you? Uh, well, we're good. Are you listening to us here, or did you, did you just dial the wrong number? <laughs> no, I, I, no I, I dialed the right number. Actually. Are you a fan <laughs> of uh, Dale Davis? I, I, yes, I am. In fact, um, um, long story short, uh, Dale and I actually became uh, friends on Hollywood Poker. Oh, seriously? And, how, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, uh... You uh, beat him. <laughs> no, last, I winter I was kind of, last winter I was kind of bored, and um, uh, I, I'll tell you how it happened. I was on Twitter, and uh, Kevin Pollack said, the next thousand people who go to this site or something like that, uh-huh. he goes, I will follow you on Twitter. Oh, so cool. Said, well, wow, Kevin Pollack, follow me on Twitter? Yeah, that's a pretty okay, big deal. I'll, I'll, go to this, yeah. I'll go to the site. So uh, I did it, and um, uh, not long after I started playing, I started playing with Dale and I'll Michael Vartan, like he said, and Michael Kate, and a few other people. Did, did, and, did you beat these uh, guys? All I want to know is you win any money from them. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, uh, it's all play money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is? But, but listen, <laughs> I, I want to I nail Dale down on something. Okay. Go ahead, real you know, quick. He's talking, about, he's talking about being a big sports fan and everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to, I uh, right now, a commitment on a bet, and I'm taking Bama against his A&M straight up. That's his daughter's school, A&M. He, he's a Texas guy. But uh, You want to take that bet, Dale? You want to take that, Dale? What's the spread? What's the spread? I don't know the points yet. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm just I'll, saying I'll, straight I'll, up. Yeah, I'll take it straight oh, up. Oh, I'm not scared of Alabama. Johnny, Johnny <laughs> I'm not scared football? of Ella freaking Bama. You should be. Uh, I know. Not with that's, Johnny football. That's just yeah. big talk. I'm really frightened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's a good bet. Uh, Alabama against A&M. We'll see. Johnny Manziel, Mr. Johnny, I'm pretty Johnny, cool. 
Listen, good. I want to, hey, Dale, listen, uh, I got a prior commitment, buddy, so I can't make it that weekend. Got to be up in Knoxville. There you go. But uh, our friend that we're working on to get up there made a donation tonight. Oh, that's and, good. And um, can you tell, can, can you um, let me know or let the listeners and, and, the, and the followers fall, uh, know what, I feel bad for not being able to make it because I'd like to come see yeah. everybody. But but uh, can we make a donation um, to the organization? Because this is great, and, I, and I've seen everything, and, and, and what Dale's doing That's is great. great. And All right, Dale's well, we'll, can't be there. Can we, we'll, we'll, do we'll ask Dale if he'll do it, and I want to thank you for calling in. All the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. They're there on are, on, right. the, on the western part of the state. There, yes, yeah, Alabama. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. All right. All right. So, can people do that? Yeah, they can go to loveacrosstheocean.org and follow the links, and they can make a donation. It's very simple. You know, it's great. People calling in saying that uh, you know they're following you here tonight. Well, well I, 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 I tweeted it. You know, you don't. You know, it's he's a, a tweeter. Well, yeah, that's special. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. Uh, uh, cool stuff. So, all right, let's do this one, one more time. Now, you've got the tournament's coming up September 28th. How do I do this again real quick? Uh, go to HollywoodPoker.com. It's on the front page. Follow the link or LoveAcrossTheOcean.org. Celebrity Poker, follow it there. You can buy a table. If you have a company, a law firm, you want to reward your employees, you go out there, have a great time, or buy one or two tickets, bring your wife. And we also have non-player tickets that you can buy and come out and have the. We have a great buffet. It's not it's steak and shrimp, and it's a whole big chef oh, prepared yeah. meal. Yeah. We also have the information on our Facebook page. Yeah, Hollywood Headliners Facebook. Good, Andy. Thank you for uh, reminding us of that, and and we want to thank you for being here tonight. This is a lot of fun. It's, if you just learn to come out of your shell, you know, you Texas boys, you're so quiet. I'm kind of shy. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, good luck. You're gonna be on uh, season four of Shameless. I hope so. It starts production in a week. Um, and what else? You got something else coming up too, by the way. Uh, a movie called The Turn, um, which is in pre-production now. It's, of course, it's about poker, a game gone bad, uh, especially for me. I uh, may or may not die a violent death. But we'll see. <laughs> Playing poker, somebody like whip a card at you and slit your throat or something. That's how, that's how it starts, but it regresses quickly. Gets better from there. Dale Wade Davis is our guest tonight on Hollywood Headliners. Thank you so much for helping us kick off the September season here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's it, a pleasure. Uh, yeah, 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 and we'll catch you on Shameless on Sunday nights on Showtime. Andy. Rob. Good seeing you. Nice seeing you for the week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a great week. And uh, we got some good stuff coming up here in the next coming coming, uh, weeks. Yeah, some cool bands. Yeah. And some other interesting guests. Very cool. All right. Andy is our producer. I'm Rob Weller. Say Rose is not here tonight. We have no idea where she is. (laughs) Quick, call the police. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you're as entitled to Hollywood as anyone. But if you come out here, just be ready. All right. We'll see you next week on Hollywood Headliners.